style. Well, what can I say about my last guest that hasn't been said already? How about this? He's thin, he's not funny, and he's not getting too much work at the moment. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Mel Smith. <laughs> Now, thanks for coming. I know you Thank dragged you. yourself out of your sick bed tonight, didn't you? I have, yeah. I've got flu, but I, for you, I came. For you, I came. Yeah. Thank you. No, thanks. Actually, I also, I also mm, I made an effort. I got a double-breasted suit because as well. Because you're not, you're not the uh, sort of lived-in slob that we've grown to love tonight, are you? Absolutely <laughs> not. It's very funny looking at that guy, Cloud, that you had on Cloud. earlier. Because I had a piece of paper today from the production office of this uh, show saying uh, it should be sort of late-night informal kind of look. Yeah. <laughs> And I didn't think that was late night informal, did well, you? It depends, <laughs> it depends where you go. It was, actually, it was very funny, because backstage he said, uh, when he came off, you know, you mentioned dilettante, and he hadn't actually understood dilettante, the word. Yes, yes, yes. And he actually said, uh, how do you think it went, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, you've just, uh, you've just finished directing your first feature, haven't you? Yeah. yeah Camden uh, Town Boy. Well, you're, not, you're in it. You yeah, but, but, well, I wanna, I've got to uh, ask you something about this, because I saw a newspaper report which said, starring... Jonathan Ross. Now, I, I did a 30-second piece with you, so if I'm starring it, it's a very short movie, Mel. What's yeah. <laughs> but he gets a big laugh, Jonathan. <laughs> he does get a big laugh. And you are still in it, which yeah. is... You, know, you, you left me in. You and Melvin Bragg are the two sort of major TV personalities who are actually left in it. You know. Oh, yeah. But now, how's it going, though? I mean, what, what, are you happy with the finished result? Have you finished editing and everything? Well, we've, 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 we've shown it... We, you, they do these public previews, and we've shown it to uh, two audiences, one in Reading... <laughs> ..and one in Wimbledon, and they've both... <laughs> And they both liked it, so uh, it's not looking bad. But we're, uh, we're into that post-production stage, and it's all... Now, what's it actually about? Because it seems kind of weird. It's, it's... Warren Atkinson's got the lead role. No. no. <laughs> He's in it, though, isn't he? He's it. He is in it, Jonathan, yeah. but he hasn't got the lead role. No, the lead role's Jeff Goldblum, the American actor, who's in The Fly, yeah. Big Chill and things like that. It's a boring story, so I won't bother... It's a romantic comedy. But no, comedy. I'll tell you why I thought it was strange, because... Um, what I'd understood was that it was written by Richard Curtis, who writes Blackadder right. and used to work on stage with Rowan Atkinson and write his stuff. That's right. Well, the basis of... I mean, Rowan's part... Uh, Rowan actually does play uh, a very unpleasant stand-up comedian in it. Called Ron uh, Anderson. Called Ron Anderson. He's which very is, similar to Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> very, very similar. Written if, by the guy who used to work with Rowan Atkinson. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, there is something sort of autobiographical about it. Ever so slightly. It. But it's a, it's a great part for you, though, isn't it? With, the, with all those R's. Mr. Uh, Rubberface himself, Mr. Yeah. Ron Anderson. It's a great... It's a... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Sorry, no, sorry. <laughs> so why, why, why did you want to do it? Why did you, I mean, because you're, you're immensely popular, you're earning a vast amount of money yeah, with, that's with true, Griff, yeah. and yeah. Why, so why do something else? Um, because I've always been a director. I was a director before I became an actor. I was six, seven years in the theatre, and I prefer directing to anything else. So the idea is that I become a director, and that's what I want to do eventually. But you used to direct uh, theatre and stage stuff, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Presumably a very different skill. Um, not really. It's just working with actors, really. And I mean, we've been in, Griff and I have done enough in front of cameras to know basically what you should do if you're directing film. It's as simple as that. Um, and just let the actors act, you know. And so in actual fact, it was, I mean, for me, it's the thing I've been working towards and I'm very glad it's happened. So is this what you want to do? You want to sort of ease out the performance? And I want to get, I want to get behind the camera. Because you don't have to look your best either. Which is, no, exactly. Which is not difficult for me, actually. You, isn't you, it? You'd be able to stop making the effort, wouldn't you? <laughs> Uh, but it's very unfair, you accusing Richard Jobson of looking like a potato, because that's what I'm always accused of looking Listen, like. Listen, I think Richard did a good enough job on himself tonight. I don't think... Uh, <laughs> I didn't have to help any. Uh, what about... that? You, you involved in one movie before, which was More on Some Outer Space. Yeah. <laughs> now, but to be fair, I mean, obviously it wasn't, it wasn't a big success. Well, it, no. It, actually, do you know, it took a lot of money in this country, actually, Jonathan. What, videos or on it, the, it, the cinemas? It, it, cinemas, yeah, it did. It wasn't very good, no. It was wrong. It was all got wrong. Like the director and the production designer were in a different vein from what we were. We, it, was just, it, was, it was a disaster, Because really. no one sets out to make a bad movie, obviously. So, I mean, I just wondered what went wrong there. With the, did you learn from that? To make not in uh, it's boring stuff. I mean, it's just not enough control, you know. I mean, like, you, you write a script and you think you know what the style of the humour is and then it's done by people who, who keep telling you that they think it's a very funny script. We love this script. And then... There was one day, this is absolutely a true story, I walked onto, I, I had this spaceman's outfit on and I walked onto a set looking for where I was going to act that day at Shepperton, at Pinewood. And I, I walked onto a set and there was a huge set, £200,000 worth of set. And, um, and I said, that was nothing to do with my film, I mean, which we'd written. So I said to the bloke, uh, excuse me, do you know where Moron Surrounded Space is shooting? He said, in here. And I looked, honestly, it was a £200,000 set <laughs> that had nothing to do with the film that we'd written. It's, uh, it was that crazy. I mean, we just didn't have any control at all. It's available on video so now. You can see the wrong set if you want to go and a get it. A lot of tape. people like it. Yeah, it, it was, you know, it was, you know, had its moments. Now, working with Griff, he's, uh, he was on TV just before this programme. <laughs> it's like being on Wogan. <laughs> you, got, yeah. you, 
you've got all the little questions yeah. over it. Sorry. But Sorry. Mel, but Mel. But, <laughs> but Mel, I'll answer number five for you now. But Wogan <laughs> doesn't have the cute the cute sense. So bring, Racing, do I still go to the dogs? No. Here, will you? Sorry, <laughs> give, me, give me the questions you see here. Evon. Working with Griff, different types, let's family. Let's Sorry. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's just, let's just. Sure, let's, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. <laughs> No, we got, we got that one done. Morons weren't wrong. Now, listen, why don't we do it the right one? You were saying they were boring after they masked them. Why don't you tell me in advance? <laughs> so, what about that one? Good answer, yes w or no? Uh, working with Griff, different types, family, man, nothing to say on that one. No. Uh, <laughs> how meet, not your nine o'clock news. Not your nine yeah. o'clock news. <laughs> Strange. You can't uh, get the staff mail, you see. Socialist, That's the socialist. Socialist. No, no, no. Do you, Socialize. Now, let's <laughs> move on from that one, then. Pete now, and Dad. Now, you see, because let's... I'll ask you this one, Mel. Just Go off on. the cuff here. Go on, in. off the cuff um, here. <clears throat> looking at the stuff you do... So natural, you know, just... It's, a... it's, it's not that new, is it? I mean, it's a bit like the stuff that what Peter Cook and Dudley no, Moore used they're, to they're, No, they're not new. No, there's nothing new in comedy, really. It's just being funny, isn't it, really? Well, no, but think... over and above that. I mean, over and above that, you know, there's not... Like, the head-to-head -head stuff... The head-to-head -head stuff of... was basically... Griff and I used to do radio commercials together because we were quite interested in trying to make some money out of radio, which is a stupid idea anyway. No, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and we found that we kind of got this sort of the, the, the two voices, just two idiots, one of them who th thinks he knows a lot, and the other one who definitely doesn't know anything. And then we thought, well, they're nice characters, let's try and put them on telly. The best way to put them on telly is actually... Uh, head to head. And you've got an album out of all that kind of new stuff. Yeah, it's good, that, isn't it? It's a great... Now, is that a helmet Newton photo on the front there? What um, is <laughs> this is so what... You actually see every piece of acne here. <laughs> If you join them all up, it's like an ordnance survey map of Dagenham. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're, you're obviously not a vain person. Not no. at all, no. But do you never mind... I'll I'm make an effort, though, Jonathan. Have you ever had glam photos? Effort. What about your wedding photos? Did you sort of dress up for those? Or? No, but actually, you know, I don't look half bad in them. <laughs> it's strange. Except the one that the son took after the party, you know. Yeah, I saw that one, that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> what about the gambling side of your life? You used to, you used to gamble a lot and you used to go racing a lot? And, yeah. No, that's... No, that, no, scrub that one out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Sandwich. Oh, sorry, the other side as well. Colin Sandwich. Straight acting, yes. I knew, I, like... I knew it was going to be a long night. This I knew, email. I, That's why. I, uh, I'd love to do some more straight acting. Do you have to be offered the parts, really? Yeah, but, but Colin Sandwich, now, were you happy to do that? I mean, because it was described in advance as a kind of Hancock for the 80s. Yeah, that was my fault, really. The writers said, for God's sake, don't mention Hancock in any of the interviews you do. And I just kept saying Hancock, and then they used it as a stick to beat us with, the critics. But it was great fun. I mean, fantastic fun. What about, the, the, I remember another season, The World According to Smith and Jones? Yes. Not very good, Well, that's what I've got written there, written. you see, because, <laughs> let's be honest, it wasn't. It wasn't your finest hour. It was, it was a little cheaper than I think we would have liked, I have to admit that. It was a sort of format type of thing, we, which we thought might be fun. Uh, we wouldn't do it again. We couldn't do it again anyway, because all the, all the film companies... Yeah, thanks to you now, no-one else on TV can buy clips because know, you bumped the fires up. So but you spoofed we it taking... on your own show, then when it was a last Smith & Jones, you then had the cheek to take the mickey out of a show, that you then went back and did another series at LWT for... I know. How did you get away with it? Man? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, in fact, we'd done both series by the time we took it off on... Oh, well, that, that would have been it. Well, well, I've got so many so more down questions. to number what? No, no, no. Look at the guy over there. What's he doing, Mel? He's You've doing been that. in TV. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That means it's time... What's, what does that mean? Time to turn the fan on, ladies and gentlemen. Mel, it's been a great pleasure having you on. Mel Smith, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>